Now, she's been described by her supporters as a politician who inspires hope for change, an example of perseverance and coalition building which they hope will culminate in a much bigger public participation in Nigeria's democracy in 2023, enough to win her the Senate seat in the federal capital territory of Abuja. But in spite of the youthward surge in her favor and the fact that her famous husband, Babagana Kingibe, former vice presidential running mate to Mashuda Biola, is possibly helping to till the political ground for her. All the pundits say that Ireti Kingibe, the senatorial candidate for the Labour Party in Abuja, has her work cut out for her. She's up against the formidable Philip Aduda of the PDP, who's been in the National Assembly since 2003, first as a member of the House of Representatives and later as a senator. A seat he's won three times and is going for a fourth term in 2023. If he wins, it'll make him the longest serving lawmaker in the National Assembly. And that's why this FCT Senate race is so singularly important, even critical. Because Ireti Kingibe, under the Labour Party, is launching a direct assault on one of the bastions of the PDP and against a man who has bestrode the political landscape like a colossus. Can she bring his reign and that of the PDP in Abuja to an end? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Ireti Kingigbe herself, senatorial candidate for the Labour Party in the federal capital territory of Abuja. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Tell us why you are running for public office and why you've chosen the Labour Party as the platform for your bid for a Senate seat. Well, I'm running because I think I can impact positively on the lives of the residents of the Federal Capital Territory, number one. Number two, um, more like the Labour Party chose me mm. than, because, than me choosing, because to begin with, I had decided I was not going to, that I was retiring from politics. I didn't feel that um, I was making a big difference. The process of the primaries and getting the people who actually run was so flawed. And, um, and when you say retiring from politics, you'd already been yes, in a I couple mean, of other parties. parties. Yes, yes. I started my political career I, where I ran as a candidate in the ANPP and uh, in an election which, though I was not the declared winner or the person who went to the Senate, but everybody knows in the FCT that I actually won it but I was an opposition senator and at the time the president insisted he did not want an opposition senator in the FCT and subsequently I ran on the when you say the president who, who do you the mean president, the incumbent president at the time it was 2003 okay right okay and then um, I ran I joined PDP when my husband my former husband, because he, he, but he was my husband at the time. That's Babagana but King. Yes, right. when he joined PDP, a lot of push pressure was put on me to be in the same party with him. So I was reluctant. So I joined and I didn't really want to run, but it made me run three weeks to the primaries. And three weeks to the primaries, I came second next to, with just a little bit of difference between myself and the government candidate. I beat the incumbent senator at the time. Mm and everybody else that had been in the party and um, I think that was it then subsequently I wasn't I think I ran one more time in um, PDP then I declared to my husband and everybody else at the time that look my politics and that of PDP just doesn't gel I'm more an opposition type of person and when I was going to leave People tried to talk to me, you will not win in opposition. And I said it didn't matter. I mm. preferred a platform where I could air my views better. And so I moved back to AMPP and then APC, then AP, AMPP became PD, APC. And in APC, I was also made to run 
on the day of the primaries, meaning I didn't know any of the delegates. Well, I must have known them because I was in FCT mm. in a, in a, not personally, but they knew of me and I knew them. I joined the primaries the day of the actual primaries. And the person that... And what year was that? 2014. Right. The person that actually won the ticket beat me with six votes. And he had been there all along. I, I just joined that afternoon and I made them understand that, well, because you're all insisting, really, th th if I won, the out that would be a mm. minor miracle. But I'm also a firm believer in that you have to get involved, which is one of the th reasons that I find that some women, and there are times I get the same thing, like the tendency would have been for me to say, oh no, today of the primaries. And I just thought, okay, nothing to lose, go and try. But I continued, and I continued building up the party. I'm not a, uh, because I fall or because I don't get, I believe politics is a journey mm. rather than a destination. So I've always gotten involved. And because of my activities in 2015, APC, I've gave me an appointment as the FCT APC leader with a letter to that effect. And I, I tried my best, but it turned out that, to my disappointment, when we were in opposition, all the things we said PDP did wrong, we did worse. So it left all, not just me, a lot of APC members very, very disappointed in the party because we were really idealistic and really believed that we could change Nigeria for good. So I told myself that, well, you know, I've tried my bit. It's time for other people to... I, I tried looking for preferably younger women that I could mentor in the FCT, since FCT is a place where anybody who's living here can actually run, but I never did find the few I found were not willing to take the chance they were not willing to run so when i said i wasn't running anymore then labor party came along first of all nnpp and then labor and and what um why didn't you gel with nnpp well for one thing um intuition there was a little bit of a disconnect between the area council party chairman mm. and the state party cha chairman and I was not, you know, looking forward to running under a platform where the um, leaders were not united. So that was the first one. And secondly, after I met the founder of the party, he was very nice and everything. But intuitively, I just felt that, no, I still did not want to go back into politics. And that was what I did say to everybody was, I still don't want to run. But then when Labour came... Not that I can't stand your guts. No, 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 I, I just no, don't no, to anybody. To no, no, nothing like that. I just <laughs> right. felt that this is not the right place for me. I didn't feel it. Right. I'm a very passionate person and I just didn't feel the passion mm. there. So I then, when a Labour came along, I still had the same I'm done with politics response, but they would not have any of that. FCT Labour. And they insisted, so I gave my terms and conditions no trading in delegates, all the things that I felt were wrong. And I said, if we're going to start a new party, new Nigeria, then we start fresh with everything right. And they met all my conditions and I became their candidate. Well, it's a very interesting story and a, a very convincing political journey. Nevertheless, having now got there, um, you're the senatorial candidate you face a formidable challenge in the incumbent Senator Philip Aduda of the PDP. I mean, apart from the fact that he served the FCT twice as a member of the House of Reps, he's won the Senate seat twice and is serving a third term, and he's now running for a fourth term in 2023. And if he wins, it would make him the longest serving lawmaker in the National Assembly. How confident are you that you can bring such a legacy to an end? I am very confident that I will bring that legacy to an end. Tell us how. Well, I will tell you how. Mm. For one thing, um, look at the electorate of the FCT. There are six area council in the FCT. Amak, that's the Abuja Municipal, 
Buari Area Council, mm. then the four other local um, councils, area councils in the back, Abaji, Kwali, Gwagwaleda, and Kuje. Now, 50% of all the votes in FCT reside in the Abuja Municipal. The remaining 25% in Buari, then the last 25 in the other four area councils. Now, let's see, look at how Senator Aduda has been winning. Senator Aduda has been winning because the bulk of his votes come from Amak and Buari. They are the enlightened, literate electorate who don't usually vote for parties per se. They look at the candidates and have a reason to vote a particular way, and they do. Sometimes we vote because we vote for Mr. A because we're annoyed with the party that Mr. B has been in. Now, look at the voting pattern of the FCT. Since 2015, yes, we did, APC did very, very well. But subsequently, APC has not been doing well. And not that APC is not the ruling party or that we're all not there, but given a choice between a so-so candidate and a terrible one, I assure you most of FCT will go and vote for the so-so one. Mm. Fine. The biggest block of voters in the FCT have usually been the Igbos, then the Hausas or Hausa Fulani, so to speak, then Middle Belt, Yorubas, then you get to the indigenous tribes. There's been this misconception that it's the indigenous tribes that have been making Aduda the senator, but no, actually. Igbos and South South and a lot of elites will look at both candidates and decide, mm, this candidate can barely read. No, I think I'll just stay with Aduda. As somebody said to me one time when I was trying to lobby for a, another person because he was in my party, mm. he said, no, no, madam, Aduda is neutral. You are trying to make me vote for reverse. So this time, let's look at the voting pattern. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Yeah, I was going to come to that mm -hmm. because, I mean, you have a lot of background pedigree uh, in, in your own right. I mean, you're the, as you said, the former wife of the famous diplomat Babagana Kingibe, who was a former secretary to the federal government and the vice presidential running mate to Mashuda Biola. Uh, in the ill-fated June 12, 1993 presidential election. And you were also the younger sister of Nigeria's former first lady, Ajoke Mohammed, who was married to the assassinated military leader, Muritala Mohammed. So I wondered if all these people helped to till the political ground for you. Is it easier because of that pedigree? Not at all. First of all, my sister, has had zero involvement in my politics. And um, my former husband, even when I was married to him, mm. would assist me in his own way at home, but he also stayed out of the political terrain of the FCT. Now, one of the things that's helped me a lot in the FCT, I speak Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo fluently. I had a Christian mother and a Muslim father. So it helps the politics, at least I noticed in 2003 when I ran, that when I go to talk to the Igbos, Abu Mwadiana, immediately I'm theirs. So politics, yeah, this, you need to create a certain amount of trust, mm. which that trust is created. With the Yorubas, my name is Ireti. I speak Yoruba to them, Ireti Femu, Ireti Wasi FCT, and the same thing with Hausa. So that always gave me an edge. But it was an edge that help a little bit during the primaries, but not as much as it does during the general elections. Now, the primaries, one of the things I have to explain to you, all local governments have the same number of delegates for most parties. That means that if you want to get elected in a primary election, those four local governments in the South that have only 25% of the votes have most of the delegates. Mm. So they, most, the two parties, either accidentally or purposely, tended to bring out two baggy candidates. Most of the time, they gave us indigenous. So we had a choice to 
between this person and that person. This is the first time that we're actually having a third option. And I think in that third option, Senator Philip Aduda will find his Waterloo and it's time to go home <laughs> and be an elder statesman. I like the term Waterloo. But beyond the disadvantages that he has, or that you say he has, if you win the Senate seat, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to use it to serve the people of Abuja and the people of Nigeria? Good, I will tell you. I've always felt that Abuja is the seat of government, the face of the country, where we all are. It can be a model and a pilot. Number one, there's so much that needs to be done. Abuja is to be tre treated like a state, mm. even though it's not. But to get that treatment like a state, we have a lot of policy bills that need to be passed that a lot of the other senators. I think if you check, one of the best performing senator was the senator that was um, between 1999 and 2003, because she was not because she was female, but because she was educated. So she understood all the things that needed to be done. Subsequently, I'm not saying the other senators were not um, educated, mm. but they were not as educated. So you need someone a bit more sophisticated, exactly. is what you're saying, basically. For one thing, states, we, we're having a lot of insecurity. Mm. Niger Abuja does not has not accessed the Ankoborua scheme in fact spite of the fact that five of the local governments are ag agrarian but because we have a minister who's not accountable to the people and most of the time senators who feel that it doesn't matter or when it's time we'll go and buy their votes or do whatever necessary to win so in terms of I intend to pay a lot of attention to agriculture and agro processing that will take a lot of uh, youth that are not educated enough to work in offices it will take them off the streets that's number one number two um i was going to i haven't fine-tuned that yet but i was going to propose a bill legislate something where the um telecommunication companies do not have to pay to cite their transmitting stations in the FCT. They do pay a lot of money for that. If they can cite them for free, in return, they can then put these transmitting towers in the rural areas, which means that you have the option of owning a farm and living in the back of Kujay, knowing that you will have telephone service mm. and internet service. That will open up the FCT. It's good for us in the FCT, and it will also give them a bigger client base. There's so many. FCT is a gold mine in the sense we don't have a ma transportation master plan. Can you imagine FCT with no transport service? We also don't have, um, how do I, I put it, like right of way for fiber optics. There's so much. The solid minerals of FCT has been mapped. Right, uh, and you're going interested. to do all this by legislation. Yes, by legislation. Right. Okay. But I also must tell you, that the FCT senator being the highest elective office also has some tacit executive powers in that working with the minister you mm. can get a lot of other things done right so I feel that yes legislating as well as working with the minister because the minister also needs to get a lot FCT has two budgets a federal budget and an FCT budget mm. so I know that FCT can be a model for the rest of the country in the hands of the right people. Mm. Well, at one point it was actually to me. I mean, in the early two thousands, I mean, it was it was quite really quite revolutionary as far and as that this country was, as was concerned. As a result of the caliber mm. of legislators that were there. Well, let, let's go beyond the particular to mm. the sort of the bigger political scene. I mean. You're part of the Labour Party. The presidential candidate is Peter B. How do you think they've been evolving in the race to the election in 2023? I think the um, uh, Mr. Peter B. of my Labour Party mm. is doing very well, and 
The reason is the whole country needs a change. I mean, if we're honest with each other, I'm not trying to knock the other two candidates, but Nigeria needs something. The status quo will no longer do. And, and, and that's the reason that he stands a very, very good chance of winning the election. But obviously the, the issue is, is actually even if you tacitly agree mm -hmm. or vocally agree that there needs to be a change, you've got to have the constitutional capacity to actually dislodge the other parties. And I think that we do because constitutionally what do you need? You need to win the, the election. And if we actually sat and analyzed it, I think the chances are very, very good for him to win the elections. Remember, he needs to get majority of the votes and getting 25% in two-thirds of the country, mm. and I, and as well as FCT, and I think he can do that. Well, obviously you would say that. I mean, that, that's the whole point. I'd be astonished if you said he wouldn't. But one of the issues that's been raised is the absence so far of a manifesto from the Labour Party and the Obidati campaign. Why is it taking so long for a manifesto to be released? Because, I mean, we really can't tell what you're going to do, what your plans are, and how you've kind of worked it out without a manifesto. Well, I, I, well maybe the manifesto hasn't been made public, but definitely there is a manifesto. I certainly have an idea of what he's going to do. Yeah, but the, the manifesto is not between, between the yes, Labour Party, Party people. Uh, yes, You've got to uh, convince the public. The public, the public is primarily convinced. We have three more months of this campaign, and in that time period, the manifesto will be released. Uh, are you concerned that there's too much time? I mean, too much time has been given for these campaigns and, and that it may end up handing a bigger advantage to those who are already advantaged financially and otherwise I mean I wonder what your thinking is about that well yes there is too much time but I don't think that is going to necessarily give them the advantage they may have more money but at the end of the day it gives us more time to talk to the people and make the people understand and and that's really what the obedient movement has been about and mm. a lot of the support we're getting even <laughs> me a lot of the support I'm getting is not um, proportional to the amount of money or how much I'm spending mm. because at the end of the day people are being convinced that if they want things to change they have to be actively involved in this change right so, so since the Labour Party doesn't have a manifesto <laughs> I mean, as far as we're concerned, there is no manifesto. manifesto. I mean, um, what is it that you say to people? I mean, you and your colleagues in, in the Labour Party. What do you say to people about how Mr. B and the Labour Party plan to transform Nigeria? The things he says at the campaign, we're going to go from consumption to production. Yeah, but those are just, I mean, those are words. We haven't seen the plan of how he's going to go from consumption to production. You see what I mean? There, yes. There's got to be, that's why there's so much focus mm -hmm. on those manifestos. People want to, to use what's become a cliche, interrogate those manifestos. This is the plan. This is what we intend to do. This is how we intend to do it. This is how we intend to oh. fund it. Well, maybe how we intend to fund it might be um, something I can't speak to. But in terms of a plan, he does tell us about a plan. For one thing, a lot of the, the North is arable land. If we, we, we are actually honest, a lot of the things that APC said they would do, if they actually had done them, Nigeria wouldn't be in the status in now. That's the truth. So telling us that you'll continue what you said you would do doesn't change anything because none of it happened. So at the end of the day, he does tell us how he's going to do it. But you, you've identified precisely the problem mm -hmm. that people have with politicians in this country. That every time a politician is given an opportunity, they say they're going to do things, then they get there and they don't do them. And so what is it about 
you, about P2B, about the Labour Party that should convince us to take your word for it. That, because all the others will say, well, look at our pedigree. I mean, you know, look at uh, Tinubu. He says I was governor of Lagos State. Look what I did. You look at, you know, um, Kwan Kwaso. He says I was governor of um, Kano State. Look what I did. You look at Atiku Abubakar. He says I was vice president. I mean, and look what we did. And yes, and when you do look at what they did, then you will understand that some of the things that it's not what it, Nigeria needs mm. for now. Now, Peter Obi, if you look at what he did as governor mm. on a small scale, then you can then extrapolate what he will do and can do as president. And as for me, the residents of FCT over the last 19 years, mm. I always keep my word, this paper will be white every single time you ask me no matter what's on the table no matter what even if everybody else in this room tells you that it has become black so i already am a known um parameter mm. in the fct even without holding any office i go out of my way to look for things for the people of fct before i thought i would be running I tried to get a water project for a place called Dangara, which today I went to commission it. And so I have been doing things for FCT. I mm. don't need an office to do what I know I can do. And a lot, I've never held any government office. Most of the things I do, I do out of my own pocket. Whatever I can afford to do, I do looking for jobs, harassing people that FCT needs this. You haven't done it yet. I am known for that mm. everywhere in the FCT. What about your campaign, though? How, how's it been going? I mean, are you kind of, what are you doing at this stage in terms of campaigning? Are you going canvassing door to door? Are you well, sort we of had lots of people doing door to door. I'm mm. um, talking to different groups. I go to the markets. Mm. Um, I go to area councils. I think we're looking at some of your pictures there. Yes. Um, I've been going to different places. So mm. sometimes a few days ago, I was in Abaji. Um, today, I went to Kuje mm. for a meeting. So I'm in town hall meetings with teachers, different things, wherever I go to the markets. So I've been doing that. Um, I'm also on radio, some radio stations. Mm. I was on Wazobia and different, different radio stations, Wakabouts, you name it. I have posters and some billboards and i will soon start sending us m messages to the electorate so i'll pretty much do what i've always done so the fact that the Talk campaign is taking a longer time you you, you don't have any problems with no, that for you personally any. no it's not I, exhausting no, you're not sort of, of course, tired and no, bored with it all by now. a little bit because um we've never had it kind of drags on, on doesn't a it? bit yeah. yes but it still gives us more time but still I'm making good use of the time. Right, but but it is you are obviously convinced that the people of Abuja will prefer you to Philippa Duda, and that you've got something to offer them that will make them favour you with their votes. I do believe that, and I'm willing to say categorically that the people of Abuja. I'm not just going to, I'm not going to predict how the votes are going to be everywhere else, mm. but in the FCT, I'm willing to say that Abuja will win the presidential election. When I say win, meaning we will get the majority of the votes. Ireti Kingibe will get the majority of the senatorial votes. In the House of Rep man, Amak Bwari, he will also get the majority of the votes cast for the House of Rep Amak Bwari that i can tell you categorically well we shall be watching the progress uh, very closely uh Ireti kingibe i want to thank you very much indeed for coming in and she is the senatorial candidate for the labor party in the federal capital territory of abuja thank you very much indeed. thank you for having me